All right, this is the first video that we're going to do to show you how to assemble a basic fast tra all aboard fast tracker board. You can get the instructions by emailing or the website allaboardfasttrackers.com. We took this set of instructions to the local hardware store. The local hardware store then cut the wood for us. Now, a couple of caveats here. When you're going to a local hardware store, you want to have somebody that has actually a flatbed saw with an extension, a table saw. If they're using a rip saw, the dimensions of this board may not be 20 by 20. This is the most critical part. This piece of wood's got to be cut 20 by 20. Off a 40, 4 by 4 sheet, you can get four boards and obviously there's some scrap. The trim or framing wood, we also had them cut for us. Most of the hardware stores will cut for you. Usually there is a charge to cut this. Depending on your hardware store, you may get a charge to cut this. What we're going to do is show you how to assemble a basic board. You're going to need a couple of things. And again, if you refer to the instruction sheets here, the handout, and you again can email us, contact us on the website. You're going to need some drywall screws, both the one inch, and then you're going to need the longer drywall screws, the inch and five eighths, but only a few for the end. So we bought some in bulk because it was the easiest to obtain. The other thing I highly, highly recommend is getting the Craftsman Speedy Lock Compact Drill and Driver. Uh, part number is 64332. You can get this from Sears either online or your local Sears store, but this is going to make this job a lot easier. Also make sure you've got some wood glue. Later on, we're going to talk about gluing carpeting to these, but we're going to assemble these so you can see what we're doing. First thing you're going to want to do is load up the drill, and a cordless drill is recommended. And then you're going to want to have enough table space to lay out the framework and put a little bit of glue on each one of these. You'll notice the nice thing about this little compact drill and driver is it's got a Phillips screw on one end, a drill on the other, and I have to thank Larry Carpenter for turning me on to this one. It makes it a lot easier. You can get this done with one drill instead of hunting around for who knows what. Okay? Again, cordless drill is the easiest. Now, when you're assembling these, I'm going to put the cordless drill down here for a minute. Put the package aside here. We've got four boards, so we're going to show a video assembling one give you a couple chances. When we're doing this and putting screws in, you're going to do like a one, two, three, one, two, three. Do your center screws offset because later on we're going to talk about the option of putting a dowel in to line up the center board so they don't sink. And it's really easy to drill the hole. It's a matter of lining up the dowel spacing consistently here, which we'll discuss later. So the first thing you want to do is get your boards, make sure that they actually you have two of each of the 20 inch. So you're going to have these boards here, the one by two by 20. And again, the finished is one, will be one and a half by three quarter. You want to make sure that these boards create a framework underneath. Now the critical part here is if these boards do not stick all the way to the edge of the, of the, of the plywood, that's fine. You want the plywood to have a slight overhang or stick out farther than this board here. If you do that, we should have something like this that we're going to screw together. These boards should never stick past this plywood. If they stick out like this, it will prevent the track from coupling. So once you have that laid out in your mind, then it's a matter of just setting this framework down. We'll set the top aside. We're going to put some glue down, a thin bit of wood glue, and then we're going to drill and screw in the holes to the board. So we're going to take this, we're going to set this aside, we've got our framework, and again, don't use a lot of glue because whatever you use, you're going to have to clean up later. So it, that's again, assuming you use too much. Uh, oftentimes, oftentimes a little bit of glue is better than oh, too much. And of course the glue is going to want to come out. There we go. Let me 
take a look and make sure you're... Alright, we've got the glue applied, and I figured that everybody didn't need to see the tedious things. The idea is, when you're putting on the glue, very, very thin film, because what, again, whatever you, whatever you put on, if it doesn't glue, it's going to ooze out. Okay, take your board, set it on top of your framework, again. You want to make sure this framework is parallel. Um, and, and if you screw, screw like the first end sides first, and then you can double check the middle if it doesn't want to cooperate, that's fine. So we're going to take our drywall screws here. First thing we're going to do is drill a couple of holes. When you're doing it, it helps to look at the edge of the board. Once that's done, the real part, the important part of this little craftsman thing, make sure you lock it. I forgot a couple times. Driving your screws. Should be nice and easy. Again, you don't need these too deep, they just need to sit below the surface. So when you lay down the carpet and the track, nothing's interfering. So we have one side done. Now I'm going to check. Again, there may be some shifting. You want it as tight as possible. thing about this piece is it's got a countersink in it, built in, and all you're doing is drilling a pilot hole to prevent any splitting. Unlock it, flip it, grab your drywall screws. hops a little bit just give a little more downward pressure again you don't want it to break anything but you want it to sit flush with the board and it may take a little practice I'm not a woodworker by trade so I can be dangerous all right now that we've got that check time to check the alignment of the board so as you can see this front board here is shifted inwards so we're just going to go and reach under, make sure it's shifted out where it lines up with the edge. The backboard, kind of the same. We did a little gentle nudge back here. Now we're going to do the same thing. Three holes here. When we're done, we'll put holes in here, use these longer screws, screw it in, and the basic board's going to be built. Later on, we'll talk about gluing the carpet down. That turns out to be the easiest thing. All right, take your bit, draw your three holes. Yes, this may seem to be overkill, but considering the condition of, considering the condition of wood you find these days um, and where you're getting it, obviously the straighter the better, but we're building these boards to be abused. If your child can take these things and in and out of the bed and underneath, or you're throwing them in the back of the vehicle to set up, you want them to last. Okay? Now notice, since the glue actually is a holding agent and the end boards are done, I was able to drill the six holes for the other two side boards at one time. Makes it a little easier. If you haven't done it before, take your time. There is there's no point in, in rushing it and then going, oh my gosh. And the worst part is, you take a screw out and drill another hole. Go 
the last of screws. So now what you have, if you look here, is essentially the fast tracker board. Now what we're going to do is drill two screws in on each corner, two screws in on each corner. And the reason we're doing that is that we've found this wood wants to pull away even though you've got all these screws here. And again, we want to make this as bulletproof as possible. Right? The last thing you want to do is have this thing not working perfectly when you're out doing your train layout or setup, and hopefully encourage you to build lots more boards. So we're going to drill a pilot hole in each corner. Take your time, okay? Um, obviously wood is prone to splitting, so we want to be very careful with this. And I don't know about you, but I've had my fair share of magical word moments with wood. That's why I'm not a carpenter. Okay. You want it just flush enough, go slow, keep your pressure vertical. Um, for those of you that are carpenters, I'm probably doing something completely wrong, you can let me know. Now you'll notice, if you're close and I can see, that we have one board here that is a little sticking out of this edge. So what we're going to do is we'll take a sander to that later. Um, if you've got some sanding paper or sander, you can sand that down so the track fitting edge will, will fit. Um, it's not that big a deal if you go a little bit over. Again, under is better. Switch this out. Again, take your time. And there you go. One fully assembled basic fast track board. Obviously, it's missing a few things. It's missing paint on the end, which we'll cover later. It's missing the carpeting and, of course, the track. So, uh, Later on in the video, we'll talk about putting carpet on, talk about putting paint, and putting the track on. All right, all aboard Fast Trackers. As you can see, we've got four modules here. Three there, one here. So now what we're going to do is a little bit of paint. This is like the easiest part of the deal. You can have anybody do it, because all we're going to do is a paint one exposed side bottom, top, curl it around. This one will paint too because it could be a potential corner piece in the future. Corner pieces get two sides painted. Choose the best two sides because the track is going to curve this way. Okay? If you get a switch track where the track curves and goes straight, you may want to always paint the side because there may be days you use it as a corner with a bumper or straight through. Then you're not going to need it, but you'll be glad if you have to use it as a corner. Now, for the boards we built so far, um, I believe we got this at Home Depot. That's the color. Um, SG-730 Tawny Port. It is not a wine, but uh, apparently it sounds like one. But that is the brownish color we're going to use. So, with any paint, have your brush, except this one's a pretty down and dirty, because all we're going to do is paint this one side and this side here, and then move on. Pretty darn simple. Um, you can paint whatever color you want. If you have a group, um, it's nice to have the boards the same, but then again, it doesn't have to be. It really is just up to your imagination. What we have thought about though, and it is recommended, is that every set of boards, or there's a set of six or eight boards to make an oval, should probably be painted the same color. Only because you want some consistency in this set per se. Transition boards, other buddies' boards, or if you're putting a couple sets together, really not a big deal. Um, and really, you know, it's up to you. I mean, it's it's your stuff. So, you know, have fun with it. The idea is that these are all toys. 
And I don't know about you, but I'm free to admit and happy to admit that I'm a kid, a big kid, that plays with toys. I don't want to grow up. I refuse, and therefore I play with trains and toys. You'll notice I'm overlapping a little bit only because when we glue the carpet down, there's a little bit of peel up or whatever. It just makes it nice. It makes it easy to where you don't have to worry about, worry about it. Bottom side, just paint the bottom. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's pretty much a very simple process. Get that put on there. And voila, one painted board. Paint around the corners a little bit. And then again, we're gonna paint down this side because again, this may be a corner board in the future. And just so you can see in the video what we do. Again, the paint will soak in the wood, that's fine. Um, if I'm horrifying the professional painters out there, I'm truly sorry, but it is a toy. Really do what sounds good to you. Um, there is no right or wrong on this. I'm sure there's a painting technique I'm missing out on, but that's okay. Okay, once you got fairly even color coverage, you just want to get the bottom painted. And voila. And we have a board that is much closer to being done. Okay, again, if you have any questions, email me on, from the website, allaboardfasttrackers.com, webmaster at allaboardfasttrackers, and we can answer your questions to the best of my ability. Okay? All right. Down and dirty, not perfect, but a little brush, a little paint, you got the idea. With our boards being done, we're going to now glue down the carpet. You can get indoor outdoor carpeting at any home supply. Again, we went to the same place. You can contact me for the build sheet. So we got some green indoor outdoor carpet. There are different piles. Um, the do-it-yourself center in Fontana, where I got this, happens to stock indoor outdoor carpeting that's like more like a felt, where it doesn't have a pile. Um, the original set of boards we have, you can see a carpet pile in them. Honestly, when everything's assembled, you'll never tell. But you can get different colors. You could do brown, you could do gray, whatever you want to do. Okay? So the idea here is that we're going to trim the, glue these down, we'll get it set, you trim them off, and then it's basically lay the track and you're done. So the easiest way to do that is with an all in one adhesive. Um, this one is called Stick and Stay. Uh, it's basically anything that will glue indoor outdoor carpet off the shelf. You want a spreader. The idea is not to get this super thick. It's to get it to where it will stay without gooping up everything, okay? Um, use a good amount. You may have to play with this a couple of times. Um, I know that I did. I had some good teachers showed me this the first time. Again, I am by no means construction, so if I'm really hosing it, uh, you can let me know. Send me an email. Uh, I appreciate all tips, but please remember this is by no means done by an expert. I can tell you for sure that you want to get as much of this to the edges and you want this thin, you want this spread out. And you want to be able to cover as much of this board as possible. Um, sometimes this stuff is easy to get out of the container, sometimes not. Uh, and again, the more you work with it, you'll begin to learn how much you need. I haven't done a lot of these. I've only done enough that I get it to work, but I'm by no means an expert. So the caveat of your experiences at home may be different. Certainly a Okay, our carpet is now dry. So it's time to trim off the excess and see about getting to mounting some track. So the first point here is use your board as a guide. Obviously it's lined up here. Use a very sharp knife. On the lefty so I gotta be careful here. And just take your time. And this should trim up very nicely. Try to draw it along. Don't hurry the process. I'm 
I'm sure that a lot of you out there will have a better way of doing this, or a better tip. And that is great. All suggestions are appreciated. If you make any mistakes, you can always go back and fix it. It's not that big a deal. So I'm a lefty, so I'm gonna, you're going to see, see me turn some things around, only because it is easier for me. One finish, completely blank, fast track board. Now, the next thing to do is mount your track. Obviously, you want to mount the track to right about there. And if you look on the curve there, the curve will provide your buffer. Typically, the spacing, I believe, is, you say, a quarter of an inch from the edge, edge of road bed to edge of the board. If you're not sure, I suggest doing your corner modules first because your corners have to come fully to the edge. This has a little bit of carpet overhang here. And then what you can do is line up, do four corners, do four straights. Then you can put straights in between, make sure your boards line up. And the finished product, like we've done today, is something like this. It snaps together. When you go to hook the boards together, Basically, you just pop it together. The fast track will actually hold it together and secure. Okay? So, now one other thing I want to mention building these boards, as many switches as you want to put in to connect other boards, switches to do whatever, your imagination is up to you. The basic concept is four corners, four straights, gives a 40 by 80 oval. Two, two sections is straight. It's all based upon that 20 inch square system. You can run multiple switches, bypass yards. A lot of us ran an inner loop. That way when we're all hooked together, we have our own real estate on the inside. And we used 031 track and some old Lionel road bed that was produced in the past. It could be found on eBay. Now it's a nice color match. We wanted to use fast track, um, but we didn't learn about the fast track 031 until after these boards were made and prototyped out. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to get our hands on some 031 fast track and really see if it's got the clearance because that would just be an awesome thing to see. Power boards. Our power board is simply connected to the track here and then we use like a phono plug to connect the boards. The board here, outside power is one, inside track is another. If you're running TMCC, the nice thing about using Photographic plugs like these is you can make a ground jumper run TMCC on the inside with a separate power supply and not have to worry about it, which is what several of us do. Again, if you have any other questions, hopefully this makes it clear, makes it a very easy system to build boards with. Um, you can email me, uh, webmaster at www or webmaster at allaboardfasttrackers.com. Check out the website www.allaboardfasttrackers one t Com. Um, and again, thanks again for watching the video. Hopefully this has made more sense. If you need copies of the build sheet, please let me know. Have a great day. Good luck. To, and I'd love to hear from you. Send me some pictures. Um, I would love to see this thing get wildly popular to where we have this big, big, huge setup where there's almost not enough tables. Okay? Thanks again and happy railroading.